Greetings and salutations friends, and welcome back to another engine check. Now I know this is a day late, and a bit later in the evening slash morning slash end of time, choose whichever one fits your time zone, but the analytics suggest that this is the best time to upload, so I'm giving it a shot. This week we're looking at a fun little engine that has some restrictions, but Index that can run it adds a nice wee addition to the board and a crystal wing synchro dragon. We are of course looking at the Wind Witch engine. This engine of cutely cold witches does come with some heavy restrictions, in that it will lock you out of special summoning anything but Wind Attribute monsters, and only summoning level 5 or higher Wind Attribute monsters from the extra deck. So that means no Link or Ixie summoning the turn you make this play. This is a very, very heavy restriction. As heavy as, say, an avalanche. Let's go over the cards that facilitate the engine, the combo to get you to that Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, and a look at the possible places these Witches of the Wind could call home. Hey. Hey. Hey you. Subscribe. And like the video. And leave a comment. Cheers pal. First up, we'll have the combo starter, and the card that locks you out of anything except level 5 or higher wind monsters from the extra deck. Wind Witch Ice Spell, aka Witch That Points to the Left. Ice Spell is a level 3 spellcaster that can special summon herself from the hand if you control no monsters. If she special summons herself this way, you get a special summon a Wind Witch monster from your deck, but that monster can't be tributed. Once you've activated this effect, that's when the restriction kicks in. It also has the nice little addition of burning your opponent for 500 damage when she's normal or special summoned, which probably won't matter much, but any way to burn your opponent when your match goes to time is always appreciated. Obviously, all these effects are once per turn because modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Next up we have the target for Ice Spell, Wind Witch Glass Spell, aka Witch that points slightly to the right. Glass Spell, a level 4 spellcaster who is also a tuner, can, when normal or special summoned, search out a Wind Witch monster from your deck and place it firmly into your hand. And then this is where the restriction that locks you out of special summoning anything but wind monsters kicks in. Once again, once per turn due to the nature of the game. For the final main deck monster, we have the target for Glass Bell, Wind Witch Snowbell, aka Christmas Bobble. Snowbell, once more a spellcaster, although how a literal bobble can cast spells is beyond me, is a level 1 tuner that can special summon itself from the hand if you control at least two wind monsters and no non-wind monsters. It also has the added bonus of granting a wind synchro monster summoned using it as material protection from being destroyed by card effects which is really, really quite nice. In the extra deck, you can use any level 7 synchro monster that is wind attribute and whose summoning requirement can be met with ice spell and glass spell. There are a few choices, and the one you choose is dependent on where you're running the engine, really. I'm only going to go over my personal choice, and I'll let you know why I think it's the best option. However, these are all the options, and feel free to choose whichever one you feel will work best for you. We have Clearwing Fast Dragon, Clearwing Synchro Dragon, Mecha Phantom Beast Konkuruda, Tengu the Winged Mayakashi, Wind Pegasus at Ignister, and Wind Witch Winterbell. My personal choice? Wind Pegasus at Ignister. Why? Be patient, I told you I'd tell you why. During your main phase, Wind Pegasus at Ignister can destroy spells or traps that your opponent controls, up to the number of at Ignister monsters you control. Sure, it's only going to be one, but it's free back row removal. However, this isn't the main reason I like this winged horsey boy. That would be its second effect. If another card you control is destroyed, either by battle or by card effect, while this card is on the field, or, and this is the important part, in the graveyard, you can banish this card, then target and shuffle back one of your opponent's cards. Since whatever level 7 synchro you bring out is really just there as fodder for Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, why not go for the one with the grave effect? It just makes sense. Speaking of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, let's have a look at this sparkly boy. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is a level 8 synchro that requires one tuner and one non-tuner synchro monster. Luckily, we can meet these requirements. Once per turn, when another monster effect is activated, you can negate that effect's activation and then destroy that monster. If that monster is destroyed, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon gains attack equal to destroyed monster's attack until the end of turn. It also has another effect which is generally less relevant but does come up. If this card battles an opponent's level 5 or higher monster, it gains attack equal to that monster's attack during damage calculation only. So, a free monster negate that destroys and gains attack, alongside a way to beat over literally anything that's level 5 or higher, all on an already impressive stat line of 3000 attack and 2500 defense, very, 
very solid card. As solid as crystal. I hate myself. So how do we get to this big bad dragon that says no one smacks higher level monsters into the graveyard for breakfast? Let's have a look at the combo. I um, don't know what that was. All I can do is profusely, profusely apologize. And welcome to the reason that this uh, engine checks a week late. I saw someone trading the Wind Witch engine and I was like, I'm going to pick that up. I'll do combo corner in real life, bruh. So, the combo starts with special summoning Wind Witch High Spell off of our own effect. This will then let us special summon a Wind Witch monster from our deck, and we're going to get Glass Spell. This, when special summoned, will let us add a Wind Witch monster to hand. What monster will it be? <gasps> It'll be Snowbell, of course. We're then going to activate Snowbell's effect to special summon itself. From here, we can sync off Glass Spell and Ice Spell into a Sync 7. In this case, it is Wind Witch Winter Bell. I don't have a Wind Pegasus at Ignister at the moment. There is one coming in the mail. And then from here, with our Snow Bell as a level 1 tuner, our Winter Bell as a level 7 Synchro Monster, we can sync these two off and go in to Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon with protection from destruction from card effects and being a big, beefy, beefy boy. And that's everything. Back to the Metal Combo Corner. A few little notable benefits here. Since we summoned Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon using Snowbell as material, it can't be destroyed by card effects. Another important one is that Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is the fifth summon and is a monster negate, meaning Nibiru the Primal Being is useless here. Finally, while yes, there are all the special summon restrictions put on by the Wind Witch monsters, this combo hasn't used a normal summon at all, so that's still available for, say, setting a flip effect monster. So where does the engine fit? Well the most obvious inclusion would be in a Wind Synchro based deck like Gusto. Gusto. However, I feel it could also fit nicely in any control deck that has the space and is looking to have some board presence turn 1 that isn't just back row. Another thing to note is that since all the Wind Witches are spellcasters, they can add a strong turn 1 play for any slower or maybe inconsistent spellcaster deck. Something like, and this is a nice wee callback to last week's engine check, you should go watch it, spellbooks. So how much space will the engine take up? It's ratio time baby. For me, it seems pretty straightforward. You run 3 Ice Bell, as you want to see it in your opening hand, and since there's no generic spellcaster searchers, which, let's face it, is a big sag, 3 is where Ice Bell needs to be. Both Glass Bell and Snow Bell only need to be run at 1, as really they're garnets that you don't ever want to see being drawn. I see a lot of people suggesting to run 2 Glass Bell due to Ice Bell only being able to summon from deck, but I disagree with this. While it is slightly safer, since if you open with your one copy of Glass Bell, the combo is dead, it's just an extra card in the main deck, taking up space and not really doing anything. Yoko! You only combo once. It's okay. You can't hate me more than I hate myself for saying that. And that's all for these frigid witches. And Bobble. Seriously, how does a Bobble have the ability to be a witch? I'm not trying to be Bobblist. I'm happy it's living its best life. I just don't understand how. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Wind Witch engine, and we'll see if this change to Thursday has any effect. Until next time friends, Treeborn Frog, checking out.